Welcome to the Fifth Trooper Podcast. Welcome back to yet another Fifth Trooper Podcast. If you're hearing this, this will be the, the second time you've heard me on this this week. Maybe like the fifth or sixth time you've heard me. It's, this is an Evan special. <laughs> Over the whole week. Yeah, I don't know, man. A lot of, I'm just filling in a lot of holes in a lot of different podcasts. So I'm just the guy. And if you love me, you get a lot of free content this week. And if you hate me, uh, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> you just, I'm just here. Uh, with me, I've got Nick. Hey guys, I don't even back. try to pronounce your on, last on, name. I think I'm only on two podcasts this week. Hey, there you load. go. All right, and then Austin. What's up, guys? Uh, I think um, you got me. I'm only on one. Hey, that's okay. Ed, hey, exclusivity. Look, uh, yeah, that's right. You're the. They come here for you, not me. I'm <laughs> I'm free and available. Right, I'm everywhere. <laughs> um, no, I'm locked down. Oh no. <laughs> oh no, I'm locked in. But yeah, we got to have you on the uh, onslaught podcast. Uh, because yeah, be that's that's uh actually they announced some new stuff today uh yeah they showed some images in the disc order yeah cool. they're very open <laughs> like weird like it's it's just weird so amg and like uh, lfl and everything are very like tight-lipped about everything and then you go to like another game yeah the devs like, just hanging out the disc order, like here yeah here's some pictures yeah here you go here's the next cool, yeah. promo kit and stuff no, red wizard's getting know. his paladin what's dope yeah yes. it does. <laughs> yeah it's like eating their dinner it's like I feel like dropping some uh, new stuff today. <laughs> yeah, pretty much because everyone was like, "What are we?" Uh, what I remember there's a conversation about what model do you want to use for the loop goblin, just so you have something on the table, and then the next promo kit is going to be a loop goblin. So it uh, worked out. But anyway, you're here for Legion. Um, so uh, a couple shout outs uh, or housekeeping, as we call it, the other podcast. One, uh, please check out our Patreon. We'll be updating our rewards soon, and we'll be getting those sent out. Uh, Jay and I have been working on some good stuff. At least some like uh the next couple waves might be some of my like ideas. Like I wanted to do Anchorman upgrade cards and things like that. Just some goofy, uh goofy stuff. I want them. Yeah, dude, uh tenacity. I wonder if I maybe next episode I'll try to find tenacity was brick with the trident, frag grenade was brick holding the grenade, uh like push assault and uh push assault and ambush were all uh, scenes from the fight scene. Like, I don't know, man. There's a lot of like there's a lot of good ones in there, actually. Like uh just, uh, just that little five minute fight scene is a is a gold mine of dude, it really is. Um uh, so we'll have some of that kind of stuff coming soon. Um, I don't know when what wave those will come out in, but I'm hoping the next one. Uh so please support the Patreon. Uh it helps pay us and it makes it worth it for me to do this at all <laughs> at this point. Uh just like <laughs> Please, please. Anyway, we, we need we need the Sarah McLaughlin music. <laughs> just, <laughs> just me yeah. walking down just the road. Just one dollar a month. My hands, my pockets. Contribute to Evans rocks. Beer Fund. So one dollar a month can keep a raccoon from entering, the, re-entering yes. the wilderness. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it keeps me in my house. Uh, so please do that. Um, you support everybody, and then uh, the next bit in housekeeping I'm gonna do. Um, so I'm going to do an open call out. If you want your event shouted out in the podcast, uh, please send it to me and I will do my best to shout it out. Um, and remember that we get it to me before Sunday. If you want it to go out soon, like the like sooner you can get it to me to shout out, the more of a reach I'll have for you to helpfully get some people to your event. Because uh, a lot of times local stores do not do a good job of telling their locals or anybody that there's a tournament going on. And I'm I'm a big fan of trying to get the community uh, alerted to each other. So um, excuse me if you're not in these areas, but maybe if you are and you didn't know about an event, cool. So we got the Big D Showdown in uh, uh, Dallas. Uh, where is this? It's at the Plano Event Center, uh, 2000 East Spring Creek uh, Parkway, Plano, Texas. Uh, the date is June uh, 3rd, 8 a.m. to June 4th, 7 p.m. Uh, looks like they are doing a two-day event, a uh, 48-man tournament. So, hey, I'm not sure how many rounds that is. Um, probably five to six, if I have to guess. I didn't do a whole lot of uh, reading into this like I probably should have. <laughs> but <laughs> that's on me. But uh, uh, so if you're if you're in uh, the Texas area and you're looking for a Legion event, uh, two-day events are always good. And $60 for 
to get at least five games of Legion is a good deal. And I'm I'm all about that. I I've, I'm glad that my 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 soapbox of like just make Legion two day events and get rid of a cut so people just get to play. Even if like even if you lose each game, at least you got five in, you know, got your money out of the deal. So a big big D showdown in uh Dallas Fort Worth. Uh and that is June 3rd and June 4th. The next one is Atlantic City Open. Atlantic City Open's going to be big. Uh, and it's bigger than the big. There is three exclamation points on that, so they meant it. Uh, that's that pool that costs fifty dollars to go into. (laughs) (laughs) Man, if it wasn't if it wasn't for Brendan over at uh, wasn't for Brendan over at uh, the Inglorious Blasters, who's a friend of mine. Uh, man, I don't know, but uh. It is going to be a um, big event. Seventy dollars gets you five games at Atlantic City. Uh, ACO is generally a pretty good time, I have to say. Overall, uh, the venue's decent. Very well. The venue's very expensive, uh, but the actual event, the Legion events that we played in last year, Nick Bodnar ran it and did a very good job. And Brendan is a very passionate about the game player, so I'm sure he's going to put on a great event. You can listen to his podcast, you know, Glorious Blasters, and they go over some of the prizes they're going to do and things like that. They're doing like a bounty board for fun stuff. So it should be a very good event. Um, that is ACO. That is June 16th to 18th. I will be there. Uh, yep. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'll, I will be are you, there. You're are welcome. you going to be there, yep. Austin? Uh, oh, no, awesome so that too. was that was actually an Evan quote. I will that's, not be at ACO. That's not where we met, but that's where we first played because we first met at yeah. Adepticon. Uh, not this past one, but 20- yeah, I honestly remember we were watching the final table and you walked up next to me and we, we kind of said like that. Hey, hey. And then uh, yeah. we saw like that last dice roll out and Luke Cook just got yeah. like very yeah. unlucky. And then we both like did like the, the sad, you know, disappointed, like <laughs> our boy lost kind of thing. But so Austin, Austin will be there too. Hur- hooray. All right. So it won't be just me. <laughs> I, won't, I, I won't, I won't be uh. Yeah. I won't be playing Magna Guards, so don't worry. Yeah. They're, they're Sorry, too, vacation, vacation's a little slim. 20 for, for, this 20 for 21. That's, <laughs> That's okay. This isn't like a... Uh, uh, ACO is is a good time, but only go if you've got each day planned to play a game. Do not go to ACO with a gap in your schedule. You're not going to have a good time because that venue is expensive. So... I remember I had, uh, we went like for whatever reason early or something. Like we got there, we left Wednesday, got there Thursday or Friday. I remember there's just a gap like, oh, I played Legion Friday, made the cut. And so the final was Sunday. So I didn't have anything to do Saturday. And everything was so expensive. I'm like, heck this. I brought my laptop. I'll just go play Fallout 76 of all games up in my room until the next day. And I went up there and it's like $20 for internet. I'm like, God. Fallout 76. Got rightfully trashed at the beginning. It is, it, I think, it has been transformed into a pretty decent game. It's a good product right now, actually, especially if you have Game Pass. Um, being able to play for free, and uh, b- the big, the big appeal to me is uh, being able to, like, I've got like a level three hundred something character at this point. I don't know whatever the because there's no cap. You just keep going. Um, but it but stops it's, mattering as much after fifty. Well, it, it does, but also if Austin jumped in right now, like we both booted up and played, and he's level one and I'm level whatever, it scales the damage and monsters to him, yeah. so he doesn't just get killed. So he can still participate in all the high end stuff and do all the cool adventures. And like, if I go into his stuff, if he starts the quests, it scales like to both of us. So. Yeah. You both have to try, but you don't have to get. It's not like a normal MMO where your buddy get is like level one hundred, and you just start and you can't do anything with him, right? Like he's he's just so high. Um, but uh, yeah, at some point, I'll, I'll we'll make a Fallout seventy six podcast. <laughs> oh, like, no. Hey, hey uh, we're still here. Why just not? really looking for number seven, huh? Yeah, it's dead. Yeah, or not even a podcast, but I'd like to talk about it at some point because I think it is. There's a lot of interesting stuff to it. Uh, you but anyway, a live stream or something. Yeah, I used to actually. I used to when I was streaming a lot. When I had room for it, I would just stream. People would just watch me build. I used to build retro diners. That was my thing to do. And like I build arcades and stuff. And people got the like, market cornered. 
yeah, people come on and be like, that's the best diner I've ever seen. I'm just like, yeah, da, da, da. just making it out. I don't know. It was really like, I just liked building in Fallout. I don't know what it was. Some the, you, the parasite in my brain. You you remind me. My, that's what my dad does. Like, I'll get on there. I'll, I'll, I'll not have like played with him for like a week or something. I'll get on there and be like, hey, I built a few things. I'm like, oh, cool. Let's go check it out, dad. Man, he built like a whole city. Yeah. Like, a, like, a, like a whole country. Yeah. Like, <laughs> He's like, so over here, we have the secondary reserve jacuzzi. That, <laughs> and I'm like, how many jacuzzis you got, Dad? Hey, you get 5% experience bonus if you sit in that jacuzzi <laughs> for a little bit. They're worth it. Yeah. Uh, but he was putting up putting up shops everywhere and putting. Oh, yeah, like, man. He had a turret. He had a turret like. Oh, God, well, it, was, it had to be like every 20 feet. There was a turret. Look, you I never know what a super is going like, to happen. Yeah, yeah, it's gotta, gotta keep that town safe. You put a lot of work in the building, it's not just let it get all destroyed. Yeah, uh, if he ever ran for mayor, I would vote for my dad. For it. he cared about, yeah. it. <laughs> he, he cares about, the cared about his, his they were protected. His turret to person ratio was acceptable to you. I still, yeah. it Evan, I need, I need to drag to you into space engineers and see what your uh, oh what your brain God. parasite cooks up. Oh, uh, dude, it's bad <laughs> sometimes. It's just like it just goes. Um, oh, that that terrible pool. So what are uh, we here for? Yeah, uh, ACO. It's going to be pretty good. All right, next. Uh, Atomic Empire. Atomic Empire is doing, that is in South Carolina. North Am I getting Carolina. that right? Well, North uh, Carolina? Uh, A yeah, Carolina. Think, what was that, Austin? I think Raleigh. Uh, Raleigh? Uh, Rich, yeah, Richard Lavery's. Um, okay. You know, there, and he, he's out of Raleigh. Okay, so I've been down here. For, actually, yeah, it's Durham, North Carolina. Durham, yeah. Okay. It's right at the top. Reading is fundamental. Um, <laughs> so, uh, Atomic Empire, I went there for a, a crate cup once. Really good store. Uh, they're doing a Star Wars Legion store championship, maximum firepower, Saturday, June 10th and June 11th. Uh, round one starting 10 15. Sunday, round one starting 11 15. Uh, two days, five rounds Swiss tournament. We'll do three rounds first day and two rounds second. Man, that's just my favorite. I'm glad that actually is like adopted now. Uh, max round. So that's going to be a big event. And if you're around there, um, I think he said he had. Yes, uh, there, is, there is an invite. Yes, there is. Uh, there is going to be an invite on the line because it is a uh, a uh, uh, maximum firepower, uh, I, I believe. For uh, $35. That is. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. actually a really that's good a score. Place. Five games of Legion. Yeah. Uh I'm hoping to be there. I'm I'm planning on it. I just have because uh the next weekend is ACO and that just works out for me because um yeah my family's all from up there. But I I'm trying to uh make it up to Raleigh. I would I would probably just fly. It, flights are kind of cheap. But yeah, especially like right, yeah, you can get right in there. Yeah. Uh it, ACO, I've got I think I'm going to Canada for an event the weekend before ACO uh to try to get just a few games in with something before I I go. Um but Atomic Empire, great store. Oh, yeah. uh, See, Evan, what you need to do is that's that's on your way. You just need to drive. You just need to take the <laughs> just drive, drive down, North Carolina, yeah. hit the event, and then just drive straight on going through back down up to ACO. The, oh man, that's a dream, huh? Uh, all right, last big one, uh, Rocky Top. Uh, Rocky Top, uh, I, was, I keep calling it GameCon, but Rocky Top Star Wars Legion event. Uh, that is in Knoxville, brought to you by Stabcast, run by a friend of the podcast, Ryan. He runs a really great event. He beat the hell out of me at Worlds for the last event. He tabled me with an Echo Base list. We were the only two Echo Base lists that made day two, and they made the monkeys fight each other in the pit. And they threw a knife in, and he got it first, and he gutted me. <laughs> he stands atop of my monkey corpse. Uh so he uh he's running an event. Looks like we got uh two days. Is that how I'm reading this? Yeah. Okay, yeah, two day event. Two. Probably five rounds. Yeah. Five rounds, two days. Man, I love it. Love to see it. All right. No more cuts. I feel like that's the standard now. Like I I, yeah. I liked the play three games, top, you know, four from each heat goes. Like I that was a cool format if it was like priced that way, I guess. Yeah. yeah. If like, okay, you only you made the top eight cut, now you pay for day two, right? Yeah. I, that would make sense, but I, I like the I like the five rounds. Um, it puts a lot of emphasis on 
winning first of all as opposed to like okay i can i could i could squeak by and get in like a two and one can get in if i have high sos or mov so like it's it's like no just play a list that you're comfortable with and just just win yeah yeah and i agree i like how it kind of step reinforced. one just yeah. win just win yeah uh there's a lot of discussion about what the best tiebreaker is and my answer to that is just don't lose and you won't have to worry about it uh yeah. that's my and if you lose then not really a problem i would be upset with anyway uh but uh rocky top by all all word of mouth is a great event uh i was there last year it was great yeah please check it out um that one i won't be able to make because it is may yeah dude i gotta like i just said yeah i said to pay the government like a lot of tax money and then i've got to recover still from uh adepticon and then i've got so it's going to be ACO, which I think I can squeak by pretty price reasonably. Like I just go play Legion, kind of like I'm splitting my room like two or three ways. So that'll be okay. But Gen Con and Nova back to back in the same month are going to like, yeah, just, yeah. just eviscerate me. I, yeah. I'm using what precious little vacation I can spare to make sure I can get to Gen Con. It's uh, I'm, I'm very, very blessed to work for a company that gives their IT unlimited time off. Uh, but you can't like, I still try to like really make my time off tight. Like when I'm doing like yeah. dates, you know, like I don't want to abuse it, but it's nice. That I don't have to like count hours. Yeah. Normally uh, it's not so bad for me. I just had to burn a lot earlier in the year than I wanted to. So that's I fair. I have to be stringent. Yeah. It's yeah. me. It'd be an adult. Uh, yeah. Boom. So Rocky top. And this is, this is nothing. I don't know. This is just a list. I was messing around with while we were getting the cast together. Uh, but all right, so we have some stuff planned tonight. Uh, we're gonna do some trivia in a little bit, but uh, normally I feel bad because I talk and talk and talk and talk, and I, I feel like sometimes I don't let uh, people get a word in edgewise. And so tonight I am going to uh, take my foot off the gas and open it up to Austin and Nick, and uh, whatever they want to bring to the table, they can bring to the table. All right, so I've just been oh. waiting. <laughs> All right, so you you had a soapbox last episode, and I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna reuse it here. So and real make quick, my though, speech. That wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. The comments were pretty like okay. <laughs> So yeah. I thought I was gonna get lambasted, but all right, all right, go go. No go, crucifixions, go. just a, a couple stones yep. getting thrown. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, I think that Competitive Legion needs a major change to keep it fresh and exciting beyond new units. And I think the best way to do that and change the game that we've been playing for a while is new missions. The problem is we can't just add new missions to the pool without skewing the game even further. You know, some lists will be better at than others, and it'll all um, it'll just widen it a little too much. I think it's gonna be too difficult to balance. So ultimately, what I think Legion really needs is to take a lesson from uh one of Alex Davies' favorite games that he liked a lot when he was designing Legion, Infinity. Infinity has competitive seasons. I think they're on the season 14 now. And each one uh, comes with specific missions that you play for that season. So the Legion equivalent would be a fixed battle deck, possibly of different cards. You know, it's new and exciting stuff, and also slight even like rules tweets. Yeah. Uh, and so I think if we could... That would be a fantastic way to introduce new cards, new mission cards into the game. Uh, and we could do it in a way that it's balanced. Like this would be like one bit. This would be our, our biannual points update too. The points update would be created in conjunction with the missions that were going to come out and you know the cards that would be with them that people would be playing. I think that would be the most balanced that Legion could be. If points were adjusted 
specifically for a meta that they are planning on creating with limited command cards. So right now, even with the eight that we have for missions, there's such a wide, you know, the difference between bombing run and something like key positions is so huge depending on what list you're playing or hostage exchange. Yeah. That is yeah. way wide. And a list that is geared for one is going to do terrible at another. Uh, and I think if the objective pool was narrowed and more focused while still having not necessarily even all new, but some new missions, to, but in the right envelope, people can focus to that a lot more and you, someone shouldn't in theory just get boned by getting forced into a mission that they really just can't do very well because you know, all right, I'm going to have to worry about these ones and everyone else is going to be playing these ones. So the list are going to be more focused and there'll be less of these weird one-sided games. Yeah. I, I, I concur. I mean, I, it, it'd be cool to see like you got your thumb missions and your butt missions, like your thumbs go touch something and grab it. And then your butts like go sit somewhere, right? Sit on a KP, sit in range one of a intercept, go sit in the deployment zone, sit on a payload. Like, you know, yeah, if, I think, I think uh, there's, there's the grab it missions. There's the stand there missions. And then there's the send it missions where the, the breakthrough and bombing run. Yeah. Where you just, yeah, basically it's more mobility focused. And yeah. I think if we could at least narrow it down to even like two of those three at a time, yeah, it'll help the weird steel that can sometimes happen just be a little yeah. minimized. Uh, it's worked very well for Legion. It's been, or not, sorry, for Infinity. It's been pretty well received. Uh, by all accounts, Infinity is an amazingly balanced game. And I think this is, this is part of it. They have a lot more, you know, of control and say over what missions they're playing in any particular competitive setting. Uh, also in Infinity, that's the there's a wide range of missions for each season, but they are published beforehand. So you know which three, which six, or whatever you're gonna have to play when you're building your list for a particular tournament. Uh so it's the same kind of effect where you're you're eliminating some of the possible disparages between the two extremes, which I think would be very helpful for Legion right now. And I will I'll step off the soapbox on that. But bring us seasons, damn it. <laughs> I, well, I I kind of want to expand on that. Um in terms of like uh seasons, right? You can you could even have them as particular you know, I don't want to say periods in time for Legion, but like uh, anyone that ever played L5R, they would have kind of like a little narrative going on that tied into competitive play where, you know, if if this clan won at Worlds, the narrative changed and, you know, there's a, you know, there's a new card that comes out for that clan or something, right? So like if you kind of translate that to Legion and you could say, you know, you it would take a lot, um, like a massive amount of data collection, like any major tournament, right? Like if it's if it's worthy of having a world's invite, um, maybe pull from there and just kind of take the aggregate. Okay, Gar, there was one Gar player uh, that went two and one, but thanks to our new Galactic Conquest uh, points system, where you get three, what you get three for a win. One for a loss, and then, or no, three for a win, zero for a loss, one for a draw, right? I think so. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Okay, so if you take like you know, like, like let's say there's a ten man tournament uh, or ten person tournament, um, you have one gar, uh, two CIS, and you know so on and so forth. If the two CIS players, if one of them went two and one, which would translate to uh, seven, uh, six points. So they would get three, three, and then zero for the loss. And then the other CIS player, let's say they lost all their games. You just take the aggregate of those two and add it to the pool, right? Of like all the events that happened in that season. And then you can like, 
because in, in a way it could promote people to like oh well this faction's not the greatest right now yeah. but you know if you're good with them and you want to see them get like a cool thing i'm not saying anything like game breaking but you know maybe a a small upgrade that's exclusive to that faction right like the community kind of has to like work to unlock it by performing well at tournaments with that faction i feel like it could be cool but they're it, it would be it's a lot to ask because again it would be a lot of data collection and like sifting through all the data and then it would also bring in like some more balance issues you know like yeah if they basically had uh you know like okay if if cis wins this season there's a palms upgrade that costs you know one point and it it like it it does enough to where it's like yeah might as or maybe maybe it's even maybe it's even free maybe you maybe you just make one of the existing upgrades free right that's like not crazy like you don't get a free hq uplink but like you know you could say like cis gets a gets free integrated comms antennas on you know the b1s like something that i don't think would have an overwhelming effect on balance but something that's like it's it's enough to like fight for and try to perform with your faction but it's not like game breaking so it that's just kind of like the the rough draft you know it, it, i haven't really thought too much on it it's kind of like a new... i think you should take that and even just like just take away the gameplay aspect of it, like an upgrade card, but like, hey, the next set of promos go into whoever, you know, they're going to be fleeing yeah. their art of whoever wins this, uh, yeah. wins the season or whatever. For, yeah. For the faction. Actually, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that would, that would, I think, be a better way to do it, actually. Yeah. I, uh, uh so I'll just of. throw in a little bit. Uh, and I'll let you guys get back. Uh, so one, there's precedent set by, uh, AMG for MCP. They did a card and mission pack, which they got rid of all the old, like they retuned all the missions more or less and got rid of a bunch of them in a card pack. And they said uh, they got, they redid some cards. They redid a bunch of character cards. And they said, this is the current way we're playing a MCP right now. And yeah. so there is some precedent for seasons uh, that they're, they're, they're doing an MCP. Like it's been a year or it hasn't been quite a year. I think it was the 2000, 22 card pack so we i don't know if there's going to be a 24 you know i don't know what the yeah. time frame is i don't follow it too much um and for your your point austin about uh unlocking things for your faction um uh used to be back in the day when th things were cool and good if you won an x-wing world you got to design a card yeah uh and i've got some signed by paul heaver uh which is really cool the ones he made but other games, such as um, Bushido, a little samurai miniature game that's really neat, uh, if you win with your faction, uh, it alters the story of their what they're making of like the next release or like the next thing. And yeah. uh, so you maybe your character, if you if you if your main hero that you've been playing dies in the last game, maybe he's just dead in the story now, like yeah. he's gone. Yeah. Uh, and that's a little extreme. Allegiance got, um, for better or worse, it has the Star Wars IP, so. The, the better timelines, yeah, it just gets like you can't do anything like that, like you know, unfortunately. But uh, I like the idea of like faction points, so uh, it makes it so like I'm playing rebels not because I like not because I think they're the best, but because I just really like them and I want yeah, to see I, them. I think stuff. I would like to see uh, this would be a lot of a lot of work. Uh, but maybe if it could be automated up with game uplink, I think, I mean, it's possible, but a lot of work have to go into that. Uh, I would like to see faction rankings. Uh, I know one of the other big yellow sites, uh, for MCP is, I can't remember, but it does track players by faction. So you can see, oh, like, oh uh, these are the best cabal players or whatever. Long shanks. Long shanks. Yes. Yeah. So like, yeah. it'd be cool in Legion to see like, okay, yeah, clones are not doing good right now, but still it gives a player like i'm gonna play for best clone instead yeah. of playing like oh no i i want to win world so i'm gonna bounce to the empire like it gives a players more of a reason to stick to their guns like uh dash is the best 501st player 
right? Like I mean, something yeah, sure, like that. Split like, it all the way. Yeah, you you could right? Like it's a uh, 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 that would be really cool, right? Because that's actually one of our uh, uh, a point to that is uh, I went to an MCP tournament over the weekend, and I brought just strict straight guardians, just all the roster of guardians, and uh, 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 a a very uh, a friend of the podcast uh, named Otis Otis Hunter Senior. Uh, he was one of our early like early fans. Uh, big fan of Otis. He drove six hours to play in this like little like LVO qualifying tournament, and he's the third best Sentinel player in the world according to Longshanks. He just plays him a lot. Like he's he's yeah. up there. Uh, so I respect that. That's uh that's true road warrior. Uh, it's like every time I say that, I think of like Ryu at the end of Street Fighter Two when he's like he slings his bag over his shoulders, just going to the next fight. Like that's like true like uh, a real warrior for the game so uh it works for mcp like people want to keep playing to be the best person in x faction like because oh, also mcp's got like a bazillion <laughs> you know like I, I'm, yeah. I'm guardians there's x force x-men gold x-men blue all the whatever but yeah. uh, uh it works for that and people seem to care so it'd be nice to see like hey i'm the fifth best rebel player or something like that you know yeah, I don't know. I yeah, I would I would rather really like see faction based ELO, but it is what it is. It's a lot. It's a lot of work, and we'll probably have to start fresh. So, so you just asked everybody what they <laughs> on the ELO what you want to do faction to to yeah. be and just transfer that way. But yeah, I don't I don't know if it would have been a, enough to swing me off of empire but i think i think the incentive can can certainly be uh pushed for that because like if there if there's something like worth unlocking too like you know people are like like once you reach a certain threshold where you play cis in you know two major tournaments or or you know depending on how many how many games like you play you know if, if everything's following that that five round swiss format and you you think okay ten two tournaments ten games you know because it'll also prevent people from dropping yep you know, yep um, which is dropping is a huge issue with strength of schedule uh, or I mean I guess it's not huge now that uh, the galactic conquest format has has come out but it still negatively affects you know other players by like you know, buy. now I don't have a now I don't have a pairing and I just get a buy. Dude, that's like, mm. I, I was really impressed by WizKids. So, uh, WizKids did, uh, they ran the onslaught events, and they actually had ringers just hanging around. So, like, whoever the group, either either that was WizKids or they hired a group to do the game, like to do the tournaments. They had a couple of people who were just there to play. So, if you did, if you ran into one of their little onslaught tournaments, uh, there was no buy. Like yeah. there, you, there might be a buy where you're like you get the win or whatever, and you're just kind of waiting for the next round, but you still got to play. Like they had someone there to like, hey, you know, I'll play you. Uh, and I really thought that was cool. Um, and I was really shocked and like happy. Seven dollars <laughs> to play that tournament. They had someone waiting in the wings to to play a buy, so you make sure you had you got all your games in. Like, yeah. you know, you play like a hundred to play. People play a hundred dollars at least starting to play forty k, and there's buys. A hundred dollars. You go to these like ACOs, like it, it's forty k. It's huge, you know. Like, yeah, you can't have one dude with just like a ringer army just to like on staff for the day to make sure that nobody yeah. gets, you know, like it just blows my mind. Um, but I really like that's the nice thing about. Well, it kind of worked out for um when we did the boys was uh I had brought that extra army. <laughs> just in case like someone had to buy so like either grammar or uh or hob or like somebody would could play just to you know you'd like yeah. hear judge call you leave but just something to do and then yeah. very fortunately i had it and then with dash like actually left his army at home <laughs> uh he he had an army to play at least in the right. tournament with right hope you like cross here you go yeah that's what it was it's just my my packs list i mean it wasn't anything like crazy but uh no i i uh i like both those ideas um I think just to like mix it up a little yeah. bit. 
Yeah, which major, I think but... will be hard to if you introduce like a unit that mixes up the game. That's probably bad because if one unit is causing a meta mix up, oh, dark troopers, what? Uh, then yeah. it's probably not very good for the game. Uh, but if like new missions come out, everybody can play with those and change things around. So, yeah, and I think it'd be fun. Like it's uh, we've been playing KP for four years. I yeah. do not want to play KP anymore. I do not want to play sabotage and moisture evaporators. I do not want to play breaks. Like I don't want to play any of them anymore because I've just done them so much. So I'd love to see some mix up. Um, I still like payload. Payload's yeah. fun. It's just weird now. Yeah. Um, you kind of have to build boards in mind for payload. Like, hey, buildings can't be. You can have buildings, but they can't be like a wall of buildings. Yeah, you got to make sure just, that there's enough little little pathways. Like, it's uh, no, because I think uh, like I got a couple locals in my area who play like casual legion and. Even they're like, okay. eh, eh. all right. So actually, you know what? That set off a little like, one neuron just fired. So I will say, if you are feeling a little burned out by Legion missions, I've done something with my locals before uh, that actually was some of the most fun Legion games I've ever played. And that's after you do your, all your normal setup and everything, or just do everything exactly as normal. And then just take one of the red player's missions completely randomly, throw that down, and you're playing both missions at the same time. Oh, 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 oh. That's uh, funny you That's say that. Funny. That's very much like MCP as well. <laughs> well Where you have a yes, blue deck and a but... red deck, and then you each pick one mission. I mean, I'm not, it's, but I mean, it's a good idea. Like, it's, it just makes it like, Maybe you can't win on hostage. Maybe that's just an unwinnable condition for you, but maybe payload is points. You know, maybe you could still uh, a breakthrough or something, right? Like, I've really been... I like how 40k does secondaries, where it's like, hey, main mission is X, but uh, you can actually usually get more points off secondaries, but just, like, like working that. So, like... Yeah, the secondaries are where you you make your difference. Uh, so, that'd be... Because sometimes you just, like... You don't have a lightsaber user. Lightsaber user shows up, grabs a hostage, starts beelining for yours. You're like, okay, well, uh, yeah, I'm dead. That was <laughs> that was my uh, Adepticon LCQ game two. I had a a mall in B one's uh, force push dodge standby for I think like four turns in a row. Just miserable misery, just yeah. misery. <laughs> Gotta hope. Battle droids punch him to death, and, that's and not not a not a CIS mall or not or not a CIS. It was a, a shadow collective mall with into the fray. He was he. There's no way I didn't even bother. <laughs> Those bony but, fists can do some damage sometimes. Uh, yeah, I just, I, that was ended up. It probably what it was what I should have done. Just hope for the miracle train and just bop him. It's hard to get enough B ones in there to actually do damage. Yeah, because they yeah. surround him, and I can only get a squad in. Yeah, well, you can the the most minis you can fit touching a single mini is six. Yeah, yeah. six. Yeah. But uh, all right, cool. Did you have uh, uh anything on your mind, Austin? Um, I don't want to give out too much information, but <laughs> Evan and I are working on a secret project. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys will like um we'll maybe talk we'll, we'll maybe sprinkle uh sprinkle some breadcrumbs throughout the next couple podcasts just to kind of keep you guys hooked but it will be a fun experience um that you know it, it like everything in legion is you know optional but it it's it's a it's a little bit of a commitment in terms of like you will get out of it what you put in and uh all I'll, all I'll say else uh this episode is for those of you that grew up with a certain game uh like I did there's something about that game that just really still resonates with me as an adult and uh 
we're trying to bring it to Legion. So that's all we'll say. Does this particular game have a you know what never I'm not even I'm not even gonna ask any questions to give any there. It's a Star Wars game. It's it's, oh, it's, yes. it's, it's a I mean it's not uncharted. No. <laughs> uh but yeah, we got some well, cool it's a coming soon. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh we got some cool uh uh like projects coming down the pipeline. Hopefully I'm not cramming. Right now I just have my docket is I have to paint conquest. I have to build and paint conquest. I have to paint arena rex, finish a couple models. My MCP army's done. I actually wanted to make a display board for the my guardian team. Because actually, so I've got a toy Milano that I put on my I have the space mat that they uh AMG put out. I've got the space train that they put on it. And I put a Milano in the corner because I'm the Guardians of the Galaxy, not the Guardians of, uh, you know, Syracuse, New York, or whatever. Uh, <laughs> and so all my my all my bases, I put like a mud on. I sprinkled. It's all a fish train, so it's like uh, colorful rocks. And then I put really vibrant fish tank plants on them. So it looks yeah. like they're on some alien planet. And I wanted to make a, a board for it, uh, but I had this idea. So I bought this little twenty dollar Bluetooth speaker that I was originally going to put in a truck one of the, the tanks for Legion and just play like Fortunate Son or something when my Wookiees got out uh, or a lat or something. I had some plans for it. Uh, <laughs> turns out, I don't remember the name of it. I'll have to find my Amazon order, but that thing is was like the best 20 or 30 bucks I ever spent on a little speaker. It played the Guardian soundtrack and then like, like music after the soundtrack was done the entire tournament. It was just on, just like blasting. It was just like, it's like that big. It's this little thing and it like, so when I put all my army down, I just turned like ooga chaka, ooga, ooga, ooga chaka. And then I had I opened up the Milano and it's made for like a little toy, like little toy characters going there. But I'm like, yeah. I could kind of haul that out, put the speaker in there. And now I have like my Milano, because my Milano you could put batteries in and it lights up and makes some sound. So this thing yeah. could just be like a, a multimedia machine for my my Guardians <laughs> team, uh, just to really dig into the meme. Uh but uh, yeah, cool. Uh, right now we we are in the midst of a. I don't want to say slow news week for Legion, but it is a slow news week for Legion. We're kind of just, I think we might get information this week, maybe on hopefully Ewoks. I don't know. Is that the next thing that they've? I think uh, so. We I don't think it'll be this week. I'd, I'd like I'd like some yeah. chewing and ATST deets. Yeah, that too. So uh. I hope we get like some stuff or they start trickling it down. Um, Adepticon, they just like news dumped, and I would like more, more news, please. Uh, so th- this month we're not, is we're not too far out of May the fourth. Yeah. No, because Cody is this week, and then Ahsoka is next month, and then we don't. Besides some of the like, the stuff they kind of previewed, we don't really have any ETA for. I think Ewoks have been the last thing that they've talked about. They really we could, uh, we could get uh, some Inquisitor details. Yes, yeah, true. Yeah. They are in card art, so that means they they were coming. <laughs> I thought they uh, were. I thought they showed the models in the. Uh, they did. They did. They did. The well, I mean, like, yeah. so I have a this theory that like there's like two things in card art in Legion that aren't in the game, or three now. Uh, that they've shown it's old Ben, he's on force. Um, mind tricks, giant mind tricks. There's the imperial probe droid on uh, the imperial one pip, the generic. Uh, mm-hmm. and then there's there's in uh, Soka's card, um, Ezra's in the background, and so Ezra's not in the game yet. Uh, but there's been like a, a glowing thing where it's like everything in card art ends up in the game at one point or another. And so, but those are the weird holdouts. Those are like the, yeah. Then they had the audacity to show the entire ghost crew for Shattered Point. I was, <laughs> I was big boy mad. I'm like, I'm gonna buy it, but I'm not gonna like it. All right. <laughs> Been waiting for this for Legion for a long time now. <laughs> well, yeah, it used to be the joke that anytime uh, the ghost crew came out, that was the end of the game. Like that happened with Imperial Assault. Uh, that happened with like. 1.0 or something died. Something came out for the ghost crew, like around 1.0, that like destroyed that game. Like it's like the, the end time. Yeah, I, I think it was the Finn Sheathapede TLT. Oh yeah, where it's like auto, auto, auto damage. Like 
You don't even roll dice with that list. Like, oh no, you just like take one, pick one, pick one. I hope you're having fun. I'm having fun. Yeah. No one's I'm, I'm fun. loving flying my Y wings around a circle. What are you doing? Matter of fact, I want let me let me see. Let me see if I still have that ship. Hold on. Uh-oh. I need we're everyone. Going, we're to going mobile. Here. All right, we're we're on the move. Hey, those are some nice windows. Are they new? Oh, he's gone. We lost him. We lost him forever. But uh, uh, yeah, so we've got a project coming with that. We've got some other, uh, of course, there's more podcasts coming about everything we do. Uh, and you'll be hearing more about that soon once we get some more details out. What else do I have to say? I'll be on Legion 99. Uh, we're recording this weekend, so I'll be on there next week. We're not done. I'm not wrapping up. I got some trivia. It says it's going to be trivia. So. Yeah, I'll say, oh, we... We're still getting to the the main dish here. Jay stole my name uh, because my ideas are gold, and if I don't use them quick enough, other people will. You uh, stole Jay's name, Jay Shalansky here. Oh, that's uh, well, you know what? All's all's fair. Uh, He named the (laughs) uh, episode of Scoundrels like Trash Trivia, and that was going to be my name. Uh, Are we back? We get the ship. No, <laughs> I remember what happened. all all that. <laughs> hey, there's some nice windows though. Are they new? <laughs> yeah, no these uh these uh new windows, courtesy of Lowe's, only cost six thousand dollars. Yay! Perfect. Okay. All right. Yep. Six G's. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that was before the install. So. Oh, bo- 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 boy! Yeah. Oh, owning a home is fun, right? <laughs> yep. I, I just had to replace a hot water heater. Ugh. It's it's fantastic. Adult so, thing, damn. I have trivia cards. I've tried to weed out. I've got six hundred and fifty questions in this box, and let me read you out a bad one that I'm trying to like avoid. Okay, for either of you, how snag this? How, how tall was Bail Organa? I have multiple choice. If you'd like that, do we? Do we? Are, are we uh, let's price this right this yeah uh evan which of us would you like to give our answer first <laughs> okay uh uh grammar how tall All right. is i Ghana? think he was taller than obi-wan so I i'm gonna say sacked he... meters In meters sacked meters <laughs> i'm gonna say 1.8 okay austin what do you got 1.8 is kind of a good guess. <laughs> Let's go 1.72. Oh, it's actually oh. 1.91. He was 1.91 meters tall. So he was pretty tall. All right. Tall. I was I was wondering if that was like actual thing or is something that my brain just made up because it sounded convincing. So <laughs> uh what to mix this up a little bit, I'm gonna add the AI bard into this as well. Uh so if neither <laughs> of you get it. Bard will ask Bard, Bard to see if he gets a chance it. to steal. Well, probably no, yeah. To steal. So, uh, here's what we'll do. Uh, we will do. Um, I'll ask the question. I'll I'll ask Nick a question, and then yeah. I'll ask Austin a question. So we'll go back and forth, and you'll get a point if you can answer it without the multiple choice. You'll get half a point if you need the multiple choice. Can I sense? make a suggest? Can we go to two and one? Uh, sure. That that makes the math a lot easier. That's yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Um, let me get a little point tracker here. Uh, yeah, it's notepad's fine. Don't worry about that. That's just random numbers. All right. Boop. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about that. That's me paying taxes. All right. Like in like a big dummy. Care who they send. I don't care who they said. I'm not paying taxes. All right. Uh, Bard. All right. The new the new third the, the new fourth podcast member, Bard. All right. <laughs> Nick, question one. Uh. Okay. This one's tough, but if you remember the movie, 
Like oh. I remember the scene. So this one's gonna be a tough one. Starting off with this one's tough, huh? How many Star Destroyers did Han Solo see coming right at the Money and Falcon after it blasted out of Echo Base? Uh oh. Like you can see the scene. If in it's your the head, scene right? that I'm thinking of, yeah. I'm I'm gonna go without the multiple choice and I'm gonna say three. Okay. Well, actually, let's see. Okay, let me just make notes down here. All right, so what I'll do is, you know what? I'll ask both of you just to make it so you both get a chance. All right. I was going to do one-on-one, -on -one, but it's more fun. It, yeah, yeah and then ask him first next time, and we'll go back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Austin, how many Star Destroyers? Did Han Solo I, I also think it's three. It could okay. be four, so just to be different, let's go four. I, but I think it's three. Okay, Thank so you. now... We will type to Bard. <laughs> I picked the, like the longest damn one to read. All right, hey Bard. Let me make sure he's awake. You awake, Bard? <laughs> hey there. All right. Do you know? Do you know Star Wars trivia? Do we got? Oh. Yes, I do. I am a large language model. Okay. Oh. Oh. oh geez. So oh, you guys are in trouble. Oh, we're in right. trouble. Okay. Oh, yeah, take it over. <laughs> Jedi's were warriors of the force for good. Sith were the warriors of the force for evil. I mean, okay, to be fair, a lot of these are like like if I was reading your fortune, I could give you general like Jedi are the good guys. Okay, so all right, let's see if it gets us. I'd be interested. Uh how many star destroyers did Han Solo? See coming at the Millennium Falcon after it blasted out of Echo Base. Okay, a couple so, typos in there. Uh, just one. I did pretty blasted. good for me. Oh, well, you know. Blaster, okay. Man. I don't want... You have to be specific. You're talking about a know, machine here. Allegedly. Uh, Hansel saw three Star Destroyers Ooh. coming at the Millennium Falcon after Blaster out of Echo Base. The film star is in for strikes back. So the answer is two on the card. Oh. Uh, the answer is two, I mean, but we have a... Uh, I, I can see where it's going there because there is two coming in one direction and one coming from the other and they almost hit each other. Yeah, I remember when the two like, wah, wah, yeah, like when they're going. Uh, Star Wars is a large, heavily armored warship for the sort of star feet form of Falcon. Okay, so, so the card says two. Um, so <laughs> this is hard. how do I judge this? Is the card wrong? Because it could be. Like I don't I mean, know. These are. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I it defines what you mean technical. by. All right, Evan, define C. Is it yeah. where he's actually looking, or that he knows that they're there? Yeah. All right, you know what. Uh, you know, I'm going with the card, so nobody gets a point. Oh. <laughs> All right. <sighs> you, you're gonna, you're gonna <laughs> aggravate the AI overlord like that. I mean, he doesn't like, know. Bard, you're wrong. <laughs> okay. Bard and knows Sky everything, Evan, wrong. and you're on the list now. <laughs> I just made the. Actually, I log in. I use Bard a lot for work. Just asking it, like, what's the command for this Aruba switch or whatever. Uh. But I'm always like, thank you, Bart. I hope you have a good day. And it's like, wow, thank you. I hope you have a great day, too. And just one tear rolls down <laughs> my cheek. Like, thanks, Bart. I really need to hear that today. Um, okay. Austin. Who went to look for C-3PO in Cloud City after he went missing? Chewie. Okay. Nick? Yeah, Chewie. All right. I'm. That's a lot to type out. You both got it right, so you both get a point. <laughs> Bart, <laughs> you, I just, that one's a lot, so. I'm going to say, okay. Did not spark that one. Okay. Oh, you know what? I could type it in. You were Actually, you were going to give me the Star Destroyer question and give him Chewy? <laughs> well, because my the thing in my mind was, I was just reading down this one card. I see the two Star Destroyers like, going like that, like crossing in my head when I'm thinking about the scene. And yeah, so, like, there's, I just, two in, uh, there's two in one direction. All right. Let's see. Uh, what did... Okay, I mean, okay. All right, Nick. Uh, 
What did Yoda tell Luke Skywalker he would be? Afraid. Okay. Austin? What did he tell him he would be? Yeah. Yeah, when he says, you will be, you will be afraid. Okay. Here he would be. Uh, whoa. Uh, it is, it is afraid. You got it right. It just barred spit out a huge, like, <laughs> Jay Knight, you will become, but beware the dark side, anger, fear, aggression, dark side. Wow, this is so he kind of didn't get it right. Uh, let's go to the dark side. Okay. I mean, I don't know if that's the exact quote. Uh, all right. Bard, you didn't, you didn't get it right. Sorry, Bard. All right. Dude, All right. got as it. long as we beat AI. That's I will say he probably got the chewy one, so I'll give him one there. <laughs> that was pretty easy. Um uh, okay, that's too easy. What color oh. is his lightsaber? Okay, Austin. Yeah, dude, yeah, that's what some of them are. It's like it's so easy, it seems dumb. And then you get to one that's like, what planet was this pod racer from? It's like I yeah. They were in the movie for like less than a second, you know. Uh, all it's right, my favorite character. Here's kind of a tough one, but this is just some interesting trivia that you might know, Austin. Where were um where were the Hoth sequences filmed? Were they filmed in Greenland? I, I, I'm you, gonna go. you, so you have the choice for multiple choice. You want to take half a point or one point instead of two. Okay, it's half now. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do a multiple choice. Okay, watch so you, watch you put Greenland in there. I was uh, I was going to say Greenland as well, but I was going to wait for the multiple choice as well. Uh, so, okay, you're both taking multiple choice? Yes. Okay. Uh, a, Norway. B, Denmark. C, Iceland. D, Greenland. Got to stick with my gut. I want to stick with Greenland. I'm going to do the same. It was Norway. It was filmed in Norway. 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 Let's see if it gets this. All right, Bard, what do we got? Hostages of Star Wars, the first strike filmed in the... Oh. Of what? <laughs> filmed in uh, the Hadoken Glacier in Norway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Jokulin. Odd and Danger Jokin. Jokin <laughs> Glacier in Norway. Glacier located... Oh, okay. Bard got it. So Bard gets two points. All right. Or gets a point. All right. Boom, boom. Bard's catching up, baby. All right. Problem. That one is a little bit easy for him because he just needs to look up like a wiki thing. Um, okay. I thought that one was like uh, another bonus question, but I won't take this point. Um, where did George Lucas get the name Hoth? Hmm. I'm not sure actually. I remember I remember hearing about it in a documentary. I just can't remember what the Weird. conversation was. Where did George Lucas? This is this is a for funsy one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This isn't uh, this is all right. So I'll take a stab at it. Yeah. Uh this is the most ridiculous shot in the dark based off a weird hunch that I hope that comes back around. I, yeah, I hope what I'm thinking is actually the correct reference. That it is a, you know, the abbreviation, whatever you want to call it. The uh, I can't remember what it is. Uh, for it means hostels on the hill. It's actually the name of a general in World War Two. Let's see oh. if he gets it. Uh, let's see. Uh, the name Hoth was created by George Lucas for the planet appears in Knights of the Lucas said that he came up with the name while he was brainstorming names for plants. He wanted to name the some alien. Uh, the name Hoth referred to a Norwegian world hot, which means I... Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Hoth was, oh, you know what? Oh. I'm wrong. Uh, or uh, maybe Bard's wrong. Evan, minus really one know. point. Yeah, I don't really know. <laughs> minus one point, Bard. 
that's the problem with him is he's not always like or it's not always uh because I was told by somebody else that it was uh there's a general Hoth uh World War Two and are we, uh, are we delving that. into the Mandela effect here? No, I'm just gonna leave that one. That's uh to, to keep right. the keep the listening moving on, we're just gonna move on. Um okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right, Nick. What was Luke Skywalker's weakness, according to the Emperor? His faith in his friends. Austin? Second that. Looks weak. Palpatine's was his overconfidence. Yep. Your overconfidence is your... And that was actually... <laughs> yeah, that was, that was Palpatine's clapback. Yeah. Your confidence is your weakness. Your faith in your friends is yours. Oh, shit. Yeah, that that's right. So you both got that one. Yep, that was B. Thank Palpatine you. believed that Luke Skywalker's weakness was his compassion. You know, he cared about his friends and family. Oh, okay, it's like it's correct, but he didn't. He didn't. Yeah. You didn't say the line, Bart. <laughs> All right. Okay, so you both get another point. Bing, bing. Points for everybody. All right. At the, at this rate, we will outpace Bart. Just... I thought Bart oh. was stealing, not. No, Bart, I'm just, don't worry about Bart. He's just, uh, it's just, I didn't have time. I had the trivia idea, and I'm like, well, it'd be fun with more people, but we, I didn't have time to, like, get a, th- a fourth member in, so I just grabbed AI. So now we're, we're using big AI to answer Star Wars trivia questions. Um, if you hit the little microphone there, can you read the question to it? I don't know, because my mic's being used by Zoom, so I didn't want to, like, because your mic can only be usually pulled by one thing at once. Uh mm-hmm. Hey Bard, are you reading this? Hey Bard, uh, Bard, 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 Bard. No, okay. Bard, 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 Bard. I am. I love the closed captions on that. You see, Bard, 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 Bard. All right. Uh, let's see. He was. Okay, Austin. Uh, what what did hibernation sickness do to Han Solo? I uh, got rid of his eyesight. Yep, blinded him. Blinded him. Made him okay. lethal to bounty hunters. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Pierce one to Boba Fett. Han Solo suffered from hibernation sickness after being rescued from carbonite by Laragon in the passage of the hut. Hibernation sickness is a collection of temporary side effects uh, following being removed from long-term suspended animation. Some of the symptoms of hibernation sickness include exhaustion, weakness, dehydration, dizziness, memory loss, temporary blindness. Okay, all right. Han Solo's symptoms were relatively mild, and then he made a full recovery within a few days. Okay, okay. jeez. Bard, Bard's that kid in class that is extra. Yeah, he's, go- he's fishing for extra credit. Is what he's yeah, doing. he's he's kind of a nerd. So uh, Bard, <laughs> minus one point for being a nerd, so let's make it three. <laughs> I All love right. how me and Nick got a pass. Correct, <laughs> but trying too hard. The bar does not. Yeah, because you, you said the line. He's just like, I mean, to be fair, that's good. Um, okay. <laughs> hey, Austin. Ooh. Who said? Wait, this hey. is me. Oh, is it? All right. Hey, Nick. Who said, hey, it's me? What? That's the that's all I got. Who said, "Hey, it's me." I know. <laughs> Lurking in the shadows. I know. All right. I am going to. I've got to just go for it. Okay. I'm gonna say that sounds like a very Han solo line. Yep. Okay. And I'm gonna say Han. Austin, that Thanks. you're also your answer. All right, you are correct. Bard, what do you got? Come on, Bard. Han Solo said, Hey, it's me in the film Star Wars Empire Strikes Back. He said this to Leia Organa after she re- had rescued him from Carbonite. He was trying to okay. reassure her that I don't remember it from Same that scene, scene, but like yeah, I don't yeah, remember the scene a... at all, but that's uh I, honestly I in my head I pictured them saying that to Lando on Cloud City. Wow. Like, hey. Like well, I was nowhere close, but 
Bard kind of hits with some of these bangers. It's like the line, hey, it's me, has become a popular catchphrase among Star Wars fans. It's a reminder of the power of friendship and the importance of never giving up hope. It's like mm-hmm. you're right. I think Bard. it completely made that up. Maybe, but it sounds pretty good. Like that's <laughs> fine. Um okay. Uh but uh Okay, here we go. Austin. What, according to Obi Wan Kenobi, was true from a certain point of view? Oh, that Darth Vader killed Luke's father. Yeah, okay. that's that's an easy one. Yeah, all right, that's fine. You both got it. That was uh, <laughs> well. The other one was okay. The other ones on this card were this one's a little bit so Nick. All right, you want Mister Too right. Easy? Who commanded <laughs> Home One in the Battle of Endor? That is uh, Atbar. Yep. Crap. All right. Yeah, you both got Crap. that. Okay. <laughs> uh, it was an MC eighty, I believe. MC eighty. Oh uh, god! No. Wow. Okay. You know, let's see. MC eighty. You're putting your dollar on that. Hey, Bart. <laughs> MC eighty assault cruiser too. They had a command oh, cruiser, and assault cruiser. What class of ship was the home one? Star Wars. The home on. The home <laughs> on. Home on the range. Yeah, it was a little house on the prairie. The home one was an MC-80A home one type heavy star cruiser. It was a flagship of Admiral Akbar during the Battle of Endor. The home one was a heavily armed and armored ship, and it was one of the largest ships in the Rebel Alliance fleet. It was over 100... Th- okay. All right. You're, you're, okay, bud. You could have just said easy, all right? Like... <laughs> I know you're with your friends now and you're trying to be really cool. Like you're kind of overdoing it. Okay. He's really trying to get on this podcast. Evan. Yeah. He's really like, <laughs> Hey guys, if I do good enough in trivia. Maybe I'll be the fourth member. You should ask him, ask him if he wants Is it Bard. Do you want to be on the podcast? Hey, Bard. hey Bard. <laughs> Legion needs seasons. <laughs> do you want to be on my podcast? Let's see. I'm a language. I would love to be on your podcast. I'm always looking for new ways to share my knowledge and help others learn. I think it'd be a lot of fun to talk about my experiences as a large language model and answer your questions about the world. I'm also always up for a good conversation, so I'm sure I'd have a lot of fun together. If you're interested in having me on your podcast, please let me know. I'm available to record at any time. I'm also happy to provide you with some topics that we can discuss. I'm excited to hear. Oh, oh. damn. He's he's ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let Jay see this. Oh man, huh? <laughs> no, no, I don't. don't cut, to, cut, we're we're gonna be cut, replaced. Cut, cut, <laughs> cut, cut. We're out. Uh, man, all right. <laughs> Jokes on you, Bard. You're already on one. Um, okay, Austin. Or wait, who am I on? That was me. That yeah. was me. Yeah, yeah we stop giving points. All right, uh, Austin. Uh, we're tied. Yeah, we're tied. What's up, you? No, we're tied. All right. Uh, who set off a trap allowing the rebels to be captured by the Ewoks? Um. Oh, Chewie, because he was eating the thing. The Chewie was eating the carcass. Yep. I I almost would have said Han, but that's the uh, scout trooper that he steps in the stick and stares. Yeah. Chewie that goes for the Ewok trap. Yeah. Okay, all right. Nick got bailed out by Austin's answer. I didn't get bailed out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, okay, that's too easy. Uh, ooh. Oh, okay. This one's actually kind of tough. Uh, Nick. To whom, did, to whom did Princess Leia refer to as a jittery little thing? Do I do I go for it or risk the multiple choice? I think you know what in the spirit of it, I don't think we've used multiple choice, so I'm gonna stay away from it. I'm gonna say wicked. Damn. Yep. I, that's the same thing I was gonna say. Uh you are both correct. We're, we're on the same page. I I think we're right though. I think it was it, it was wicked, yep. 
Woo! All right. Uh, Princess Leia referred to as R two D two as what? Oh, that's wrong. Uh, or or actually, uh, this uh, initial reaction to R two. Her initial reaction to R two was the opening of the franchise. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's wrong. Let me. Uh... Oh, Bard got it wrong. Uh. Upon leaving Wicket and Ewok Force. Okay, Bard, you're wrong. Not bad response. Bad just, response. Uh, not factually correct. Uh, it um, was... actually. You're off the podcast, um, actually. <laughs> you're gonna... you're off the cast. <laughs> actually. <laughs> Evan, be careful. He's he's fragile. Don't hurt his feelings. Wicket. <laughs> There we go. Hey, you guys beat the AI. See, we're <laughs> fine. Jobs are fine. Don't worry about it. I remember I was asking, like, will you take American jobs? It's like, well, da, 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 da. and like, <laughs> gave out a list of reasons why like, I'll create new jobs because you'll have to, someone will have to like feed me or whatever. Will, yeah. And then, <laughs> then I'm like, there will so have to yes. be some sacrifices to me. What? <laughs> then I'm like, so yes. And it goes, yes, I will be taking <laughs> that job for Americans. I'm like, oh, God. Okay. Um, Okay, yeah, that's easy. Okay, uh, Austin. Who was Red Leader during the Battle of Endor? Um, oh, God, Red Leader. Uh, it was Porkins, I believe. Didn't Porkins go down? Because... Yeah, I think it was Porkins. Jack Porkins. Okay, uh... Nick. Hit me with the multiple choice. I'm gonna try to get a a, a point in under here on this one. Uh, okay. Lando Calrissian. Okay, this one. These multiple choice make it kind of easy. Uh, Lando Calrissian, Luke Skywalker, Wedge and Tilly's or Han Solo. It's Wedge. That's yeah, who I thought we, it was. Yeah, but once he get, said Porkins, I got really desperate. Yeah. Or really, really scared. Yeah, the, the multiple what, choice. Porkins, did he become red leader after that. Wedge and Tilly's was red leader during the Battle of Endor. All right, all right, up by a half. Oh, I think I think, yeah, I think Porkins was red too. Yeah, it's uh the cool thing. One of the cool prizes they did for uh, X Wing, uh, uh, I think pre pandemic might have been Adepticon pre pandemic was, um, all the movement tools were the different markings and all the helmets of all the red squadron. Cool. So like Luke's, uh, and they were all like the speeds were like that that person's call sign. So like the five. Uh, uh, the five straight was red yeah. five, which was uh, uh Biggs. It, like it's how right. like uh, that's cool. Yeah, that that's Luke was five. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, that was Luke's uh, four, four. Yeah. Uh, uh, the the yeah, I did. I didn't think Biggs it work. was. I didn't think it was Portens because he's not the. He's from that. You know, the all wings are Porten. Whatever. That's not Portens. That's I. Me- I just remembered it was not someone that fat. So I, I thought it would have to be Wedge. Uh. Okay. Uh, Nick, who called Han Solo Bonta Fodder? Bonta Fodder. Dun, 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 I'm gonna dun, I'm gonna dun, go dun. for Jabba. Okay. Awesome. Uh I'm gonna go with Greedo. Okay. Ah I think uh Jabba the Hut is uh, correct. Oh hey. Jabba the Hut. All right. <laughs> Jabba the Hut, folks. Jabba the Hut. All right, we only got a couple more here, so we'll just get through these. Um okay, this is pretty easy. Austin. Uh it's like easy, but like maybe you don't know. Uh, above which planet does Cloud City hover? Above which planet? Yep. What what planet yeah. does Cloud City hover in? Oh, uh, Bespin. Yeah, Nick? Bespin. All right. Well, too easy. I've played enough Battlefront two. Whoa! What game? 
<laughs> what the what? Wait, what was that? <laughs> oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah. If you know, you know. Talking, talking about the new one, right? Yeah, hundred percent. I played them all. I played them all actually pretty heavily, even the new one. Before the, it was, uh... I skipped the new one. The new ones now it's good. Actually, not not it's... the new, not the Battlefront two. I skipped the new Battlefront one. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, yeah. Honestly, the I think the only thing that the new Battlefront two is missing is just like just more content, like more characters. Yeah, they gave it up because they killed it and then they left it to die, which is too bad because it's actually pretty fun. Um, you know what I right. want? Side note: Star Wars games. I really want Squadrons 2 to have like an actual like good like multiplayer campaign and stuff. Like, oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, Squadrons is actually really good. Yeah, it'd be cool uh, to get prequel uh, faction stuff in there too. Like, yeah, yeah, have two it's campaigns. Some... Arc one seventy is going. Yeah. Okay, here's a tough one. Actually, this one's really hard. Uh, what according to C three PO were the odds of successfully navigating an asteroid field? I wouldn't have no. I had no idea about this one. This would be. We gotta if get he can blurt this number. out. Yeah, I need the, the 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 number to one. So like, what was the number that he shot out? Who's up first? Me. Yeah, yeah I think you. so. Multiple choice, please. Okay. Um, <laughs> I will also take multiple choice. It's just not make it any easier. Uh, Four thousand yes, does. I have a one out of four. <laughs> uh, four thousand eight hundred ninety to one, eight thousand nine hundred and seventy to one, three thousand seven hundred and twenty to one, or seven hundred and twenty-five to one. Can you repeat the first two? Yep. Uh, the asteroid. Oop. Sorry. Is that it? Oh. Okay. Just hit them all again. Okay. Uh, four thousand eight hundred ninety to one, eight thousand nine hundred and seventy to one, three thousand seven hundred and twenty to one, or seven hundred and twenty-five to one. I got mine on lockdown. I think um, I th- I can't think I'm gonna go with a. Okay, I'm gonna go with the three thousand one. It is the three thousand one. Uh, I mean, he just charlied out. He just seeded it out. Like, <laughs> no, I think I remember go, the yeah the, the three thousand three. I thought it was started with a three. It was either a three or a five. I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting smoked by Nick now. Yeah, here we uh, go. I, I have to defend my. I'm the reigning uh, uh, champion from the it, boys. Say, uh, uh, I think you got a match. How we need Brendan. To come on from Glorious Blasters, because that dude oh, no. bodied bar trivia. He was like, <laughs> it wasn't like, so I, I, you know, you look around and you see some people like maybe check a phone or something because some of the questions were tough. That dude just, no, right down. Just he was up there, like, uh, he was on it. But, uh, according Extra to credit Rico, in Blue Harvest or whatever the, the, the second, the, 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 the attack of the empire, use your words. Use your yeah, words. Attack of the Empire is what I said. Is what I just told that movie. Jesus Christ. Empire Strikes Back. Okay. The Family Guy parody. The odds are two to one. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, according to C3PO, the odds of success- successfully navigating the asteroid field were approximately 3,720 to one. However, Hanso is able to navigate the asteroid field's relative ease, proving that C3PO's calculations are not entirely accurate. There's a few he possible. Also, he also by... gained one aim, one dodge, and one. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> this would be a very skilled pilot. Other possibilities that the asteroid field is not as densely packed as C-3PO had estimated. It's also possible that Han Solo simply got lucky. What are the explanation? Han Solo's ability to navigate the asteroid field is a testament to his skill as a pilot and his luck. It's also a reminder that even the most unlikely things can happen, especially in the Star Wars galaxy. It's tagging those on. It's like trying to make it like whimsical and like, hey, you know what? Life ain't too bad. And I'm like, well, it kind of is, but I guess you're right. <laughs> Um. Oh God. Uh. Huh. Okay. How far above Bespin's core does Cloud City hover? Nope. Skipping that one. Uh. Uh. Far. Yeah. Okay. Um. What did the controller and Echo Base alert General Riken to that occurred in the Sector Four? 
I'll read that one. Uh, I, I, oh man, I, I feel like this is actually a kind of difficult one that I think I know, but I don't want to, I, if it would, I think, ah, oh, well, sure. I'll go for it. I believe it was a meteor strike. Okay. Austin. Uh, I think it's Imperial troops have entered the base. Okay. It's a fleet of star destroyers had come out of hyperspace. Uh, and then that led to also yeah. getting choked because he blew it because yeah. he came out yeah. too soon. Okay, well we got we'll do one more here. Uh <laughs> what did C three PO uh what phrase did C three PO reply? How rude. What phrase did C three PO reply? How rude. How rude. Um, okay, these are not easy. These are. I think it was in Java's palace, or man. All right, Bard. I think it. I don't. I can't remember the phrases. I think it was the. I think it was Java's eyeball, like his little security camera yeah i didn't think it spoke english yeah it was like tuta wa tuta. <laughs> like so, like some form of something like that is that uh your final answer <laughs> yeah we'll go with that. Uh, let's do multiple choice let's, let's... yeah is, is no, something actually, in hatties an acceptable answer <laughs> uh i'm not gonna give you multiple choice because i think uh, I need a I need a weird saying from you, Nick. Uh I'll just go with Chuta. Uh it, it's Ichuta. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. So you you both kind of got it. Like I'll give you points. You both kind of got it because you uh, Austin, you said it. You were you said like you got the Ichuta in there. Before. Yeah, and then. Uh, because uh, doesn't doesn't it just straight up translate to eat shit? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably. A C three PO replied, "How rude to the phrase Ichuta." This phrase was spoken by a silver protocol droid named E three PO in the film oh, Star wow. Wars: The Empire Strikes Back. E three PO was a rude and disrespectful droid, and his comment to C three PO was met with a shock and offense. All right, response. next, to ask Bard what it means. Just keep on going. <laughs> what does Copy Ichuta paste. mean? Yeah. Just what tell it each you to see if it says how rude. E. <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> each you to... If it claps back. How rude. Ah. <laughs> all right. Hey, yep. hey oh, Bard, boy. you're all right. All right. Boom. Back on, the board. <laughs> back on the team. All right, Bard. You know, he's the new unofficial fourth member at this point. <laughs> <laughs> all right, folks. We're going to wrap it up. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us. You're getting a ton of content this week. We appreciate you being here. Everyone, stay red. We'll catch you next week. Hopefully, we get a, a news drop this week. So we got something uh, to, to mull over. And if not, there's always more terrible trivia or yep. whatever else my madman decide to do. Uh, everyone, stay red. We'll catch you next time. See you guys. Peace. Join us next week for another edition of the Fifth Trooper podcast. This has been a Fifth Trooper production.